In today's political climate, reaching across the aisle has become rare. That wasn't always the case. In more than a decade together in the Senate, Oregon Senators Ron Wyden and Gordon Smith forged a partnership. The Democrat and Republican held joint town halls around the state and worked together on some big issues. Today, they reunite to talk about their shared passion for mental health and the future of bipartisanship in American politics. From KGW News, this is Straight Talk with Laurel Porter. Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. They served together for 12 years in the U.S. Senate. An Oregon Democrat and Republican praise for working together across the aisle to make Oregon better for their constituents. This week, Senator Ron Wyden and former Senator Gordon Smith are back together again in Oregon for a special event. Smith is presenting Wyden with the annual Gordon and Sharon Smith New Freedom Award for Senator Wyden's advocacy on mental health issues. And we're pleased to have both senators joining us here on Straight Talk to discuss their efforts to raise mental health awareness. We'll also get their thoughts on the state of the U.S. Congress today and what happened to bipartisanship. Plus, we'll look ahead to the 2020 election. Welcome to my guests, Oregon Democratic Senator Ron Wyden and former Oregon Republican Senator and current CEO of the National Association of Broadcasters, Gordon Smith. Welcome to Straight Talk. What a treat to have you both here. The treat to be back. Yeah, good to have you and, and thank you for doing this, Laura. Well, first time to have you both on this show and also I understand it's probably been the first time in 12 years you've been together on a news program. I think that's probably right. Yeah, we, yeah. we finished the debates a while back. Yeah. <laughs> well, what a privilege to have you here, and you're both in town for a very special occasion, the annual Gordon and Sharon Smith New Freedom mm. Award Dinner, first created by the National Alliance on Mental Illness, or NAMI, here in Oregon. This award was first presented to you, Senator Smith, mm. and your wife, Sharon, 11 years ago for all of your work raising awareness on mental health following the suicide of your beloved son, mm -hmm. Garrett. And every year since then, you have presented the award to another deserving individual. And this year, you are giving the award to your friend and former colleague, Senator Ron Wyden. What does this award signify to you? And what does it mean to give it to you, give it to Ron Wyden? Well, first of all, I'd say it's about time we did. <laughs> but we've had to work on our schedules to make sure that the Senate is out when we give this award out. And, uh, I think it goes back for me, not just for all that Ron has done on mental health um, throughout his career and since I left the Senate, but when I lost my son, um, I can count on my on one hand the numbers of senators who were truly brothers to me, uh, giving me a shoulder to lean on and helping to heal. Ron was one of those. In fact, when I testified before the, the Health and Education Committee, um, he was right behind me, and throughout the passage of the Garrett Lee Smith Memorial Act, he was my partner. And um, that bill opened a lot happening on mental health, uh, and, and we're making progress, but sadly there's still too much um, suicide in this country. What does it mean to you, Senator Wyden, to get this award? Well, it's such a personal honor because we had so many bonds together you know the New York Times at one point called us the odd couple because they were just amazed that people would actually work together but our bonds were really like cement both of us mm -hmm. had faced mental illness in our family Gordon with Garrett mm -hmm. and me with my brother, yeah. you know, Jeff. And we have a photo of you and your little brother and your parents from when you were young. Tell us a little bit about that struggle and how it affected your family. Laura, I can tell you, and, and Gordon has heard this, for years and years, there were nights when we would f feel that my brother would be on the street and the question was, was he going to hurt himself or somebody else? And that's still the case with mm -hmm. so many Oregon families. So mm -hmm. Gordon and I share a lot mm -hmm. of bonds. Uh, you know, today people are talking about civil war in government and the like. Well, Gordon and I had one or two civil disagreements, <laughs> but there was never a civil war. No. So this 
award means a lot to you on many levels then. Yeah, it does. And, uh, and Gordon and, and Sharon have really been the gold standard in terms of stepping up and particularly in the philanthropic community, it can be hard to keep people's attention. Now, you all uh, in the media deserve a lot of uh, credit in Oregon mm -hmm. for highlighting uh, the cause of, uh, of mental illness. And I just think the combination of people like the Smiths, rare that they are, and the media with all of you speaking out gives us a chance for more forward progress. And I've been talking with Republicans and Democrats in the Senate about the next steps to improve mental health, and we may have to get Gordon back as uh, a lead witness. <laughs> because you say, Senator Smith, so much needs to be done. The youth suicide yeah. rate is still going up, especially in Oregon. What else would you like to see done? What else can Congress do? Well, it, you know, I once had a, a very warm conversation with President Obama, and I, and I said to him, because he had invited me to participate in the White House Council on Mental Health, and had asked me to be the private sector chair of the Action Alliance for Suicide Prevention, which I did for six years. I told him, I said, you know, whatever the, the deficiencies in Obamacare, Affordable Care Act, I said, it is to your everlasting credit that you made mental health the equal of physical health, because they are truly interrelated. If you don't have mental health, you don't have health. And I, I told him then, I'll lay down the tracks with you to defend that as a principle and whatever reforms come of it. And because people like Ron are there in the Senate um, in a very powerful position on the Finance Committee, I think he's in a place to make sure that whatever reforms come out in health care in future years, that will still be the case. Uh, we need access, we need affordability, and we need to keep the conversation uh, going so that people know that there's reason for hope and, and healing. Are you confident in that, Senator Wyden, that you can make that happen? I, I do feel that uh, the Senate is picking up on some very big challenges. For example, uh, mental health services in rural America, in rural Oregon, are really uh, hurting. And we have a very high veterans a suicide uh, rate in our state. So that's something, the Senate is by and large a rural institution. So I think yeah. that we could get uh, strong support uh, for that. And I also hear my colleagues in the Senate talking a lot about making sure that the parity law, mm -hmm. treating mental health the same as physical yeah. health, actually gets carried out. So I think, uh, there are ways for Gordon and I to keep teaming up on this. And the key is to remember, and I found this, I'm sure Ron has found this, healthcare can be a very divisive issue politically, but mental health does not register Republican or Democrat, it registers human. And so I found that that was a, a, a real bridge. You could get a lot done together with that as the carrot to uh, bring people along. We want to let folks know if you or someone you know is struggling with mental illness and or thoughts of suicide, the Lions for Life helpline is available 24-7. This is the National Prevention Suicide Line. The number is on your screen. It's 1-800-273-8255, and they will direct you to local resources. We, we touched on this a little bit already about your bipartisanship, but let's talk a little bit more about your relationship when you were in the Senate. You first met when you ran against each other in 1995 for the Senate seat, which was open after Senator Packwood's resignation. It Senator was a really low-key, quiet <laughs> race, too. So I'm just was, thankful was, most <laughs> people have forgotten that. <laughs> so not so quiet. It, it was a fierce battle between yeah. the two of you. You won the race narrowly, Senator Wyden, and then mm. Senator Smith won the Hatfield race the very next year. A lot of people thought, as a Democrat and a Republican, that you ran against each other, you were going to be fierce adversaries. But that's not exactly what happened, is it, Senator Smith? No, in fact, uh, we talked on the phone shortly after that election was decided. Decided to get together for breakfast, talk things out. And before the uh, orange juice was poured, I think we'd become friends. And I think what both of us uh, came to legislating with was a heart for getting things done. And as an elected official, you have two responsibilities. One is to your conscience. 
on some issues that you can't compromise on and you tell people about that. But there's a lot that you do because you're trying to represent people. And uh, those are the two responsibilities to yourself and to the people that you represent. And most issues actually aren't all that political. And what Ron and I laid down our swords and said, you know, when it comes to Oregon's interest, uh, we can do a lot together. So we did, we, we had, had an Oregon agenda, together, we had right? town halls together, and we met in, for lunch once a week to figure out where we were on our agenda and getting done what we had learned in, in statewide town halls. It was very productive and enjoyable. So how do you compare that relationship, that working relationship you had, that bipartisan relationship in the Senate, Senator Wyden, then to what the Senate is like today in general? Well, let me offer one more word in terms of the, the history that is um, little known. After uh, our elections, and I don't think any other state can have two senators who competed against each other and both were elected in the same year, which was in 1996. Oregonians were pretty rattled about uh, our state's prospects. We had been represented for years by Bob Packwood, chairman of the Finance Committee, who was described as getting to raise all the money, and Mark Hatfield, the chairman of the Appropriations Committee, who was described as getting to spend all the money, and then all of a sudden a couple of rookies who had <laughs> been belting each other around had um, come in. It would be almost the equivalent of like replacing Damien and CJ with a couple of obscure guys <laughs> nobody knew. We any. had big shoes to fill. That's a good right? description. And we put our heads together and figured out how to, how to do, uh, well, frankly, deliver a lot for Oregon in those 12 years. So how much have things changed since then to now? Uh, let's ask Senator Wyden since you're in the Senate right now. Well, certainly it's far more polarized and I, I understand that. I mean, and there are a variety of reasons for this. I mean, we certainly have not KGW, but we have media for the left and media for the right, all kinds of forces that pull people apart and not so many that bring people together. And what Gordon and I said is, that's not what Oregon's about. And by the way, just a little bit ago, I was at Westview High School, and it's in Beaverton, and all the students want to know is how people back there are going to work together, and not the Democratic answer or the Republican um, answer. So I continue to believe that Oregon, in our trailblazing kind of fashion, we can help extricate ourselves uh, from this. And I'm an Abi Ban believer. He was the great Israeli diplomat who said, the Americans always get it right. And then he paused and he said, after they've tried everything else. <laughs> maybe we're in the everything else department, but yeah. Gordon and I had some ways to show people how to get beyond the fighting. Yeah. Senator Smith, you shared with me when you were on Straight Talk in April, the role of social media. Mm -hmm. And you said when social media came on the scene around the early 2000s, you noticed something changed, things mm -hmm. happened, that the level of civility in public life seemed to yeah. begin to collapse. Would you elaborate on that? Well, when we were boys, we had a morning paper, an evening paper, and you had uh, ABC, NBC, and CBS, and you had an AM and an FM radio, and that's how you communicated with the world. And we all love our technology, and we can't turn the clock back, and the best way to deal with bad information is with more information. We believe in the First Amendment. but. I did notice uh, about the time we got started getting Blackberries and you had to stay on um, online all the time, social media became such a wrecking ball to um, relationships. Winners and losers weren't identified on a Sunday talk show. They were instantaneously and often in very vulgar, profane and destructive terms. And that tears at the fabric of your ability to go work with each other. Uh, and so it's a much meaner environment now um, in the country, and that, uh, Congress is a reflection of we the people. Do you agree with that, and what, what do you think we can do about it? Gordon has made a number of points, uh, not just today, but you know, in the past on, on this. 
I wrote a law uh, a number of years ago which essentially protected platforms. And basically what it said is we'll make sure you're not going to get sued when you're just trying to get your new idea off, off the ground, but you have an obligation to moderate what is actually put out on your platform. And a lot of these companies have used the first part, but haven't used the second part. And I think the companies have failed to use that provision that protects them when they remove slime from their platform. They can remove slime and hate mm -hmm. from their platform and they're legally protected. The First mm -hmm. Amendment, by the way, really pretty much says speech is speech. Our law says that these companies ought to be stepping up and getting this, I call it slime, off the platform and they better do a better job of it or they're gonna find uh, that some real uh, tough, uh, tough pictures are thrown at them. And I'll tell you, Laurel, I'm so proud to represent broadcasters, radio and television, uh, affiliates and networks. And survey after survey shows that when it comes to where you get your trusted news, uh, we are head and shoulders above any other platform. And so it's, a, it's to commend you and your colleagues. Uh, people want the straight scoop, they tune into you and, and some of the other channels here. Uh, Chuck Schumer made that point to an NAB audience not too long ago, and he said, this is the only place I can go anymore where I know people just want the facts and they won't try to spin me and they won't try to spin their viewers. And so I'm very proud of our broadcasters in America. We're the essential news source. Part of the reason why I love my job and, and why we have you on the show. I want to ask you something as CEO of the National Association of Broadcasters. You have called out the big tech companies like Apple, Google, mm -hmm. Facebook for blocking competitors and yes. stifling innovation. What's your biggest complaint? Well, I mean, I, I, uh, they have every right to sell ads and everything, and we have to compete better, and I think we do a great job of competing. Um, but it is also true that they are becoming so monolithic that they control the platforms and they keep everyone out. I mean, um, for example, if you have a fire, a volcano, an earthquake, um, a terrorist a a attack, the first thing that goes down is your cell phone, but they won't allow a broadcast signal on, on that. They want you to stream it so they can bill you for it. I think there are some public values, both for consumer protection and for public safety, that there ought to be these, uh, this architecture in telecommunications that includes all Americans, irrespective of their ability to pay uh, a subscription service. And so I think, you know, they just say, no, we're not letting you in. And I think that that's a mistake. Um, they ought to do it for, their, for the American people. Anything Congress should do, should act on this? Certainly, a couple of areas come to mind. First, I think it is way past time to pass a strong privacy law. You know, we have had one example af after another, and you look at Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg has lied repeatedly with respect to Facebook's privacy policies, and I think he ought to yeah. be held personally accountable for it. So in the privacy area, I think the Congress is gonna to need to step, uh, step up. And I also think there's a role for Congress in terms of promoting competition. We now have three or four behemoths in the technology area, and there's more Congress can do to promote competition and hold these companies accountable. Senators, we need to take a break, but I do yeah. want to ask you about the impeachment inquiry and the 2020 election, and we'll do that after the break. We're back in two minutes. Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter, and I'm pleased to have both Oregon Senator Ron Wyden and former Senator Gordon Smith joining us for a rare joint TV appearance. It's been just a delight to have you on the show. I do want to ask you about some of the current events going on, the impeachment inquiry. Last week, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi decided to move forward with an impeachment inquiry into Donald Trump. Her decision came after a whistleblower complaint and a memo about a phone call that President Trump made to the president of Ukraine asking him to investigate Joe Biden and his son. Senator Wyden, you came out in favor of impeachment proceedings before all of this happened, but what's your 
take on these latest developments, and it seems like we learn something new almost every day. These latest developments, Laurel, are especially serious because they're different. If you look at the Mueller inquiry, and as you know, I sit on the Senate Intelligence Committee, to a great extent, that involves almost six degrees of separation. You'd have one person in the Trump campaign saying something to another person, who would say something to a third person, a fourth person. Um, this is very different. Here, there are no buffers. You have one president speaking to another president, and the American president is saying very specifically that he would like the Ukrainian president to do him a favor, to help him obtain dirt on a very serious potential arrival for uh, the presidency. And by the way, he understands that uh, there's a lot of money that the Ukrainian president wants. So this is different and I think especially serious. Senator Smith, let me ask you as a Republican, mm -hmm. are, are you troubled by this? What do you think about the impeachment inquiry? Well, I, I just remember this isn't Ron in my first rodeo. We went through the Clinton impeachment and that was no bowl of cherries, I'll tell you. Um, it was very divisive. It was a very ugly time. And I think in the day of social media, I see this as only uglier. Um, look, we, a senator is a juror. If the House votes on articles of impeachment and the facts will come out. Uh, it's not strictly a judicial trial, but it is more a political trial. But there can be facts that come out as occurred before Richard Nixon resigned that were just so obvious that the president either would be convicted or would uh, resign. I don't, I have no idea what all the facts will be. Are you be. troubled by some of the things you've heard? Well, of course, of course I am. And, and there's a lot of things that happen in our country. And I'm, Ron serving on the Intelligence Committee, no doubt he knows that there, there are an awful lot of arm twisting that goes on between nations. And uh, there's, you know, the whole origin of the Russia investigation. Um, it's pretty ugly stuff. And um, I think when we go and investigate our opponents, we ought to do it at home and not abroad. <laughs> but it's been happening for a long time. And, um, and I think it's just catching up to us. How do you see this playing into the 2020 election? There have been people who say that this is just going to uh, embolden mm -hmm. Donald Trump's base and, and help him get reelected. Well, I will just tell you, first of all, I, I feel really badly for a, a colleague, former colleague and still a friend, Joe Biden, because I think he's now caught up in this. I have no idea what the re Democratic response will be to how he's going to be drugged into this. Uh, but it's going to have ramifications for him and for, for President Trump. And um, I don't, it's hard to predict the many twists and turns ahead, but they're not going to be insignificant. What do you think, Senator Wyden? How is this going to affect the 2020 election? There are a lot of issues still, you know, outstanding. For, for example, I've been very troubled by the recent comments. And as Gordon just said, I'm, I'm a potential juror here, so I don't get in to the nuts and bolts of the factual circumstances. But I've been very troubled by the president's comments with respect to whistleblowers. And if ever there was a time when our country needs people who are not political to come forward and speak truth to power, mm -hmm. and President Trump has since said some pretty frightening things um, to whistleblowers. And this is the case even though the president's appointee, Mr. McGuire, the head of the director of national intelligence, has said that uh, the whistleblower's comments and the transcript of the phone call basically dovetails. So uh, there are especially serious issues here. Do you have a final thought to share, Senator Smith? Just delighted to be home on this sunny day in, in Oregon uh, to honor my friend Ron Wyden for his uh, great service in the cause of mental health. Senator Wyden. And, and so good to be able to talk about bonds from the past yeah. and bonds going forward as we strengthen mental health laws in America. It has been a treat to have you both thank here. You. Thank you so much for thank joining for us here on us. Straight Talk. And thank you for watching and listening. And a reminder that Straight Talk is now available on a podcast. You can find us anywhere that you download podcasts. Just look for KGW Straight Talk. We're off next week because of football, but we'll see you in two weeks. Join us then for Straight Talk.